welcome back to another episode of Spiritual Superpowers. We're excited for you to be here today. We are going to be talking on Zoom because I am not in the area. I'm actually away for the week um, at the cottage and I am still working because I'm able to do uh, treatments like distance healing and distance Reiki. So we thought we would take a moment to, to make an episode about how distance healing works. Um, I know that there's a lot of questions and a lot of skepticism around it. Uh, so we hope that it doesn't get too sciencey, but uh, enough that it, it helps you wrap your mind around how it works. I do a lot of my uh, animal communication from a distance too. So the same principles that apply to distance Reiki also apply to my animal communication. So I, I just think it would be interesting for people to understand this. We actually did 10 case studies at the beginning of this year in 2021 with patients. And how I tend to like to do distance Reiki is that I will set an intention based on what their needs are in that moment. So it's easiest if you have something you can actually rate, you know, stress level, heart rate level, pain level, that type of thing. So about 10 minutes before the treatment, I have a client fill out a bunch of questions to be able to rate where they are. And then mm. I go to the session and then immediately afterwards, they're to fill out the same form again, going through the same questions. And the, the difference is absolutely amazing. Like I, the, the people we had this week had from, you know, a seven out of 10 to a one or someone who actually felt like everything that I had written in the, e the follow-up email she had actually felt the whole way through the treatment. She, it's really cool to see and be able to measure the difference. And I think that that really helps people to see, like, I have no idea what you did, but it worked, you know, and, and that gives people a little trust in the process and makes them a little bit more, I think, uh, open to the idea of doing a distance treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I thought we would kind of talk about some of the research that's been done um, I'm a huge science nerd, so forgive me if yeah. you're not, but I love reading research. And one study that I found really cool uh, was done in 2008 where they, they wanted to see intention. And really that's what Reiki is, any type of distance healing. It's, it's having a, a set intention and focus. They took 36 couples and 22 of those couples, one of the partners had cancer. And what they did was they brought the 36 couples into three groups. One group was trained for three months on how to give compassionate intention. The second group was not given any training. Mm -hmm. And the third group, again, not given any training, but was also asked not to do anything. The participants were hooked up to a skin conductance computer. And that's where they can actually measure emotion and the way that emotions affect the body in a physiological way. So both participants in separate rooms were hooked up and they were just left alone for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. The one that was trained on how to do compassionate intention, set the intention and they would do it in little bursts of like 10 seconds with a break in between. But they timed when they were doing these little 10 second bursts of compassionate intention. The group that wasn't taught how to do that was just winging it and whatever they they thought it would be to to have compassionate intention and again they measured when they were doing it in those 10 second increments mm. the partner yeah actually showed that the, their physiological changes happened simultaneously at the same time that their partner was was sending those little 10 minute 10 second clips of of intention the physiological effects were very positive. They're so I just think that that's really cool because there's so many different levels there. It's not just the people who were trained. It's the people just sending love and compassion to someone actually had a physiological change. Now there was more benefit to someone who is trained, but mm -hmm. um, it still works as long as we're out there and we're sending love to everyone. I mean, we all can receive that and have those really beneficial physiological effects. So I just think that that was really cool. That's really amazing. You can just think about someone in a loving way and you're helping to heal them. Exactly. And the people who were in the control group, there was no measure. There, yeah. is, there is an importance to an intention. 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. So there's different theories on how distance healing or distance Reiki works. I'm going to get a little bit more science geek here. So there's four theories that are scientifically valid <laughs> to explain how you can actually affect someone who you're not even with. Uh, four theories. The first one is that intention is transmitted by an as yet unknown energy signal. And mm -hmm. I think I love this one the best because what it's saying is that it can be possible. It hasn't been proven. And I think that that is so important for us to remember that every day there's new discoveries. And mm -hmm. in my world, the more I learn, the more I realize how much I don't know. And just because I can't explain something or there isn't an explanation at this period of time doesn't mean that it doesn't actually exist. It just means that mankind hasn't been able to actually scientifically explain it, right? Yeah, it's like, you know, even things like, you know, acupuncture when they mm -hmm. weren't sure that that really worked. Now there's a lot of science behind that. I think it goes down to proof is in the pudding. Like, I mean, if... You know, the study that you just talked about, there's, there's proof. And, you know, it would be cool it, once they get the science out there to definitively prove that. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait until they do that. Um, so the second one is that intention warps space time much like gravity does creating pathways for connection. Now for anyone who doesn't, isn't really familiar with space time, I think we've all heard of Einstein's theory. It's basically that time is relative. The more heavier the gravitational pull, the slower time is. So um, time and space are affected by gravity and therefore possibly also affected by intention. Mm. So I don't know if that makes sense, but intention might have the same force as what gravity does. I kind of explain it that energy doesn't have any time or space, sort of like spirit, right? There's no time or space, you know, when you if you're talking about spirit, you talk about someone on the other side. And as soon as you say their name, they're right here, right now, right? There's no time and space. Well, that's, that brings me to the third. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> or that people possibly like particles are described in quantum physics as having instantaneous correlations across distance. There is no time and space. Yeah. So just yeah. like what you said, yeah, that's the third theory. And then the fourth theory is that intention is much like measurement in quantum physics. It organizes random possibilities, much like how wave functions can be collapsed into a single function. So this comes into play, like if a tree falls in the woods and there's no one around. <laughs> Does it make a sound? <laughs> that kind of questioning mm -hmm. um, that you only know the answer when you observe it. Because at that time, it is both yes and no it does make a sound it doesn't make a sound so there's an observer effect in physics and it's that the disturbance of an observed system by act of observing there was a study in quantum mechanics and it's best demonstrated by the double slit experiment now a lot of people are familiar with this but for those of you who aren't what they did was physicists found that conscious mind can directly affect reality ah uh, yes yes yeah, the particles the exact same particles changed whether or not they were being observed or not by humans. Interesting. I think distance treatments or telepathy or psychic power, all of those is one way of explaining it scientifically for people who need that kind of understanding. Yeah. And, you know, I believe that in 20 years, the kind of things that you and I do will be so commonplace, you know, and we'll look back and kind of wonder why we didn't do more of this before and the consciousness of people you know on the planet is increasing so i think people are pe more than ever people have that curiosity about energy and you know all the things that we talk about on the channel here and um i think as more and more people get curious there will be more and more discoveries made and we'll uh, we'll just keep elevating in leaps and bounds i think it asked by my patients, how I do a distance healing. And I actually approach each one very individual. I don't know what I'm going in with. What I tend to do is use all of my tools and it actually starts uh, almost an hour before I actually have 
the, the scheduled appointment. So I, I, you know, I set the space, I clear the space, I clear my energy. Um, I love to do some move form of movement before as well. So if I haven't already exercised in the day, then I will do a quick five minute yoga. And then I go into a meditation. Last month, we did all kinds of samples of different types of meditation. And that's exactly what I do is I, I pick whichever one I feel like doing that day, whether it's a mindful meditation, or actually for our viewers, I did a treatment on Karen this morning. And for Karen's treatment to prepare, I did some holotropic breathing. I just feel like it really elevates me to a, to a wonderful level. So I will sometimes draw cards either before, during, or after, especially if someone is very general and they don't have any major complaints. They don't have anything that they can really measure. They're just looking for some kind of healing. I always have my tools nearby, my crystals, which I used on Karen today. Because once I'm kind of in the zone and about to go into my treatment, you know, I do a invoking of all my you know, entities, as well as the entities of the person I'm working on, I set my intention. And then I will either picture the body on my massage table, and I will treat it like it's there physically. Or I will often use a stuffed animal and I have a stuffed teddy bear that I like to use and I just pretend that that's the person. So it just depends on whatever I'm called to in that moment. Mr. Reiki, uh, I'll often start with the uh, physical body, mental, emotional, and then spiritual. Each layer I will evaluate and treat for whatever I'm being told to do in that time. But one thing that seems to happen, I'd say 95% of the time is that people really do feel a difference. Yeah. And I encourage all of you to give it a try because yeah. it's just a good thing to try and a good thing to receive energy and positive vibes. So when it does seem impossible or when it seems crazy just remember that a lot of stuff that we can't explain there's a lot of stuff that we don't know and there's a lot of stuff yet to be discovered but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist well i hope this explained a little bit about what a distance healing might be like and like karen said i hope that some of you do give it a try it's so nice. yeah and i think uh to explain to our viewers that don and i haven't talked about the specific distance Reiki session that happens. So we're going to just talk about that now. Yes, we are going to get to that. However, since we like to keep our video short and sweet, we're going to conclude this episode for today. However, if you're interested in seeing Karen's distance Reiki video, we're going to include an automatic play link to that video for you at the end of this episode. Keep watching and you'll be able to watch as we explain Karen's distance healing Reiki episode. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And please remember to subscribe. We'd really appreciate that. We will see you all again soon. So take care and sending you all love and compassion. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>